In this video, we can look at part two of our ratio analysis practice question. We can look at the potential answer you could come up with. Let's start with the question. What is the first thing you should read before you read that case study to galvanize where you're going to go? So our managing director is strongly in favor of continuing to offer Service 100. As we'll find out in a moment, that's a credit system offered to customers that gives them 100 days to pay. Analyze the financial performance of Isagonis PLC. So liquidity might be quite important because we're talking about credit terms here. Do you agree with the managing director's view? Justify your decision. Remember our managing director in favour of continuing it. But let's look at this case study. So as again as PLC offer aftermarket car parts, modified parts, a retailer. The target rich with younger drivers, people who are actually unlikely to get as much credit and certainly down to disposable incomes that other people might do, so therefore credit's going to be quite attractive. And they've mentioned this is a significant USP. They have a large range of products in superstore style outlets, so that could be quite important. We could have quite a bit of stock. That might put more onus in terms of the result on the acid test rather than current ratio, because we are a stockholder business, and that might not be that liquid. Service 100 is a scheme that allows delayment of payments for 100 days, so our receivable days might be interesting to see how that impacts. Marketing Director is a keen supporter, and certainly thinks has given us that USP in this very busy marketplace. That might be something that we might find, whether it's significant or not. The firm has recently been acquired by a large multinational conglomerate. Again, what are their objectives going to be? That could be something we want to look at as we go through. And they want to know whether it's financially viable. So that's the case study material. Well, let's have a look at some of the data. And this is what we were given. So we were given the current extracts from their accounts for 2015, as well as five years ago, and some industry benchmarks for today. So that's what we're comparing to. Now, a key thing here is not to focus too much on the calculations, because you are given this financial ratios data so therefore there's not so many marks for you calculating data it's more the interpretation so that's what we're going to focus so what does it mean well let's start here so this is the key data we had we always need a comparison if you have no point of comparison for business it's very hard to make judgments so the first thing we could do using that data is to come up with the comparisons to where it's going to PLC is today in 2015 using that material from the appendix that gave us the extract from our accounts. So the first thing we can see is we can break it down to the three areas liquidity, profitability and the efficiency ratios. So from a liquidity point of view you can see that our current ratio and our acid test ratio are actually worse than they were in 2010. Actually it's quite significant. Current ratio has lost 0.3 and the acid test equally lost about 0.3 again. So this is quite significant, not 0.9 to 1 to 0.6 to 1 the acid test. This company is in a far less liquid position. Remember stock could be a key issue for us. Giving has gone down as well, that could be a good thing. It does give us scope to spend more. Again, don't think below 50 is good, above 50 is terrible. We need to think about what scope that gives us. We've got scope to spend some money here. In terms of profitability, our term of capital employed is not great and actually it's getting worse, 6.1% to 4%. So that means all the money that's been employed and invested in this business, in terms of a profit at the end of it, we're only getting 4%. So every pound invested only generates 4p. That's not great. So that's something we might want to look at. Gross profit margin is higher by about 3, 3.5%. So that suggests that the goods we're selling, rather than selling for a higher price but paying the same amount ourselves in terms of initial cost, or we're sourcing cheaper raw materials to sell on. So it might suggest a lower cost strategy or just trying to eke out those profit margins. Our net profit margin is actually worth 15% down to 12, so actually there's some inefficiency here. We're getting the gross profit, but somewhere in the process, all our overheads, we're losing that. So always spending a lot on marketing, we don't have that information. In a real detailed case study, you might have that. And finally, our efficiency ratios here. Our asset turnover is about the same as our industry average, and this set of information is based against the industry. Our payable days, now this is interesting, this is how long it takes us to pay our suppliers. Now the industry average is 210 days, which does seem quite long, but that's the average industry will accept that as being an okay figure. We're taking 338, that's significantly longer. Now that's not a great position to be in, so that's worrying. Why is it taking so long to pay? Equally our receivable dates, this is our service 100, our benchmark. Now this is quite interesting. Industry average is actually 120 days. It's taking customers four months to pay. So it may be the fact that other companies are using similar sorts of arrangements, so I don't know how much of a USP it is, or they could have some reason why payment's taking longer. For us, we're at 96 days, for his PLC, which is actually within our 100-day limit. 
got some scope to take that further, but not a huge amount. Other bits of information we can pull out of this apart from the comparisons. Our inventory's turnover is 2.25 times a year. So the stock we have changes on the shelves, if you like, once every five months or so. That's not particularly quick. Going back to why we might make the acid test ratio more important than current, if we need to find cash quickly, to clear our shelves at the moment takes on average five months. That's quite a long time when someone's after some money. Our cash position is very low. We've got just five million pounds worth of cash compared to our current liabilities, 125 million. So we've not got much ready cash available. So liquidity is starting to build a picture of not being good for this business. And finally, we can actually look at this in a bit more detail and see that we're currently owed 70 million pounds from our customers. Look at the receivables on that data. Well, 70 million is quite significant in the scope of a total annual revenue of 265 million. So considering it takes our customers under 100 days to pay us, that 70 million is very significant in terms of making up our sales. So the system does seem to work. People are buying into it. So a good question we need to look for and against and come up with an evaluation. Remember, it's very important to have that balance. So what are the arguments for keeping Service 100? Well, the first key thing is it's been harnessed as a key USP in a very busy marketplace. So it does seem to be working, customers are buying into it, and we're certainly seeing sales, and certainly we're developing debtors, if you like, the receivable numbers are quite high, so people are using it. The firm is remaining profitable, net profit margin has dropped 3%, but maybe without that USP, pulling people in with Service 100, it could have been worse. We're not sure, we haven't got all the conclusive data. Gross profit margin has increased by 3.5%, we're not sure whether it's under Service 100 or not. Perhaps those younger customers are slightly less interested in quality, so they're able to sell them some of those cheaper sourced goods. We've got £70 million pounds worth of debtors, and again, that's a significant amount of sales. We can assume it's all service 100. reason for keeping it, it's working. People are actually taking advantage. If we stop the service tomorrow, well, would we actually lose that £70 million pounds we currently got sales, which could be far more over the course of a year? Average payments currently 96 days. This is within the 100 days. Credit control, certainly with our customers, is not an issue. And it's better than industry average. Quite an interesting finding. Real case study, you might have a bit more information just to put that into context. And finally, younger drivers have less disposable income. They're also less likely to be offered credit. So, actually, as a marketing USP, this does seem to be very promising. If no one else is offering this, this seems to be something which is helping us and getting sales in at the moment. Well, what about the counter arguments? Well, first of all, liquidity, and this is probably the most important one, it's decreasing. Our acid test, which is more important due to the amount of stock we hold, has dropped from 0.9 to 1 to 0.6. That's quite dramatic. We would not be able to cover debts very, very quickly. We've only got £5 million worth of cash. So credit control needs to be improved. Could it be that getting rid of the Service 100 would help us? Certainly, we'd have £70 million more in the bank if we retain our sales. Pebbles is deteriorated from 210388. It's a lack of cash. Again, we're at 5 million. A lot of money tied up with our customers having taken stock that we haven't received cash for. It doesn't matter to 125, but would it improve that? Probably likely. A third point is that currently, as against PLC, don't have an awful lot of cash to support such extensive credit terms that's being offered. So, an alternative suggestion could be beneficial. Certainly, at the moment, credit as a USP is not something that this business is well placed to offer. Finally, lower gearing. 35% gearing we've got at the moment. So, this actually opens up possibilities. Why keep Service 100? Perhaps we could invest in something else. We've got scope to borrow. Our return on capital employed is already low. They don't seem to be making a lot of money from what's been invested. So, perhaps we need a change of tact. Do we push towards innovation? or maybe we push towards a lower cost strategy and get rid of the credit terms. So this could all be arguments against keeping the Service 100 system going. So in conclusion, what do I think? Well, liquidity is worrying, it's getting worse, credit control is poor, receivables however is better than the industry average. From that point of view, Service 100 isn't a complete disaster, it certainly hasn't spiralled and we haven't got massive bad debts. We need to consider the objectives of our new owners. Where do they want to go with this? Are they a company renowned for lower costs or for renovation or something different? You could bring Porter in here. We don't want to sit in the middle ground. Do we go wholeheartedly at lower costs? We can see evidence that the gross profit margin is getting better. So does that suggest we're buying things cheaper? Do we go further in that direction? Or do we come out with something new and something different? Maybe a clearer focus would help us here. There is evidence of the USP. 
as we've seen, there's actually 70 million pounds worth of sales that are outstanding, presumed on Service 100. This is a significant amount of our annual sales for this business. It does work. The question is, is it the right way to go? You could argue that get rid of Service 100 would improve liquidity, but undeniably you would lose sales. That 70 million pounds worth of cash tied up with our customers haven't paid us would be great, but we would lose more than that in terms of lost sales over time. So on balance, Service 100 does seem to be effective. It's bringing in customers. It certainly seems to be working. It's quite a lot of sales is tied up and linked to this system. However, competitors seem to be offering something themselves. So is that really a strong enough USP, as the marketing director seems to believe? I don't know. However, one thing is sure. The biggest issue for this business is credit control. It is a problem. Cutting Service 100 would improve it, but perhaps only in the short term. In the longer term, would that loss of sales be a bigger issue?